Well, today we're going to talk a little bit about ACL surgery and specifically graft fixation uh, with the opportunity to talk about interference screw fixation and its evolution. I'm Ashish Beatty from the University of Michigan, and thanks for the opportunity to be here. I think all of us who do sports surgery enjoy the opportunity to do ACL reconstructions, and largely it's a very successful operation. More than 90% of our athletes typically get back to sport, but I think it's always our job and as surgeons and our drive to always do better. And uh, when we look at failure, uh, it often falls into different types of categories. We tend to think of failure as a structurally torn graft, but as we look with a, a little bit more granular detail, we recognize sometimes failure is still an intact graft, but with functional instability for the athlete. And when you look in the literature at not returning to sport or the potential for associated meniscus injury after an ACL reconstruction, those numbers start to get higher, and that gives us an opportunity to continue to do better. I think all of us know when we look at what the most common reason is for an ACL failure, it's usually socket malposition. Well, we know that when we place our tunnels in a non-anatomic location, it doesn't make for a biomechanically or kinematically normal knee. And that's something that we have improved upon and, and certainly in 2018 feel comfortable with, with a number of different options to perform relatively anatomic ACL reconstruction. The importance of this has been recognized. I think many of us have seen uh, images like you see on, on the screen here, vertical graft orientation that gives good sagittal plane stability that we sometimes don't appreciate instability on with a Lachman or a drawer test. But these knees are still rotationally unstable and they still have residual pivot shifts with the athletes feel when they return back to cutting and twisting sport. Lots of credit to, to my colleagues and, and those before me like Dr. Clancy and Dr. Fu and others who have taught us about the anatomy of the ACL. We now recognize this femoral attachment as this broad footprint on the lateral femoral condyle, the tibial attachment extending as anterior as the inner meniscal ligament, and the importance of placing our graft within the context of this footprint to, uh, to the best of our ability to restore the normal obliquity and alignment of the ACL. When we do these ACL reconstructions, or even when we scope knees in general, you can appreciate this anatomy. We've talked about posterolateral and anteromedial bundles, but perhaps the most important principle is that we have a continuity of these collagen fibers uh, extending across a broad footprint to have a variable tension throughout functional range of motion of the knee. Well, when we look at a multifaceted approach to improving our outcomes of ACL reconstruction, anatomy has been a large focus, but we don't want to forget some of these other principles. Uh, we know about occult instability and injuries to the anterolateral capsule, ALL, and posterolateral corner. We recognize that even if we do everything correctly anatomically, sometimes the biology is against us and tendon to bone healing reliably is a challenge. But we certainly don't want to forget about an opportunity for us to improve our outcomes as surgeons, and that specifically is this in, in this area of fixation. And that's what I want to focus on to a large degree today. Well, why should we care about fixation? And I wanted to highlight this paper that was done by Dr. Kurosaka and Andrish years ago in our American Journal of Sports Medicine. And remember, they looked at different methods of fixa fixating an ACL graft and the mechanical properties on the reconstructed ACL. And if you go back to this landmark article, as shown in these graphs, you see that the weakest region of the reconstructed graft is the fixation site. So let's not forget that when we finish our ACL reconstruction, that is our weak link and also our opportunity to have our best time zero fixation. So continuing to visit newer and, and different ways to perform reliable fixation for our grafts is worthwhile as surgeons. Uh, this is a paper from West in 2005 that points out the choice of graft fixation even influences the risk of revision surgery after a primary ACL re reconstruction with a soft tissue graft. And soft tissue grafts are probably particularly vulnerable. Uh, rather than bone-to-bone -bone fixation, which is typical for our orthopedic principles from trauma and, and AO uh, surgery, we recognize that soft tissue grafts offer additional challenges. This is a paper from Thor Zantop and Wolf Peterson from Germany where they looked again at fixation. They wanted to compare the structural properties of interference screw constructs for soft tissue grafts and also visit a very important principle, what damage do we potentially do to the graft when we insert an, an interference screw? And I'll highlight the important principles here, which is that their study showed that a titanium screw to fix a soft tissue graft did cause damage to the graft. 
And in fact, uh, paying attention to this at the time of surgery is critically important because we don't have the benefit of second look surgeries or sometimes outcomes down the road where we can explain this from time zero injury related to our fixation. This is another study that you'll see here that again visits this issue and it highlights the fact that graft laceration or pull out slippage at time zero is a concern with soft tissue grafts. In their study, what they ended up finding was that insertion of interference screws did fundamentally alter the biomechanical properties of the graft itself. It decreased yield load, ultimate load, stiffness when compared to a native graft. So once again, inserting an interference screw with a soft tissue graft may not be benign, and for us to do this right, we need all the right principles and all the right aspects of our screw to get this correct. So what is the ideal interference screw? And I would argue these are the principles that I look for and that all of us look for. We want it to be easy and reliable. We want good bone stock. We want it to be as strong as possible the day we do it in the OR. Ideally, we want the screw to hang around long enough, if you will, to have time zero biomechanical strength, but also reliably become part of the bone without a foreign body reaction. We want to avoid damaging our graft putting it in. And maybe, as we realize the importance of biologic augmentation in the future, we may want it as a vehicle to deliver biological augments. And certainly, we also want it to be safe and cost effective. So that uh, uh, gives us the opportunity to talk about how screws have changed over time. And all of us would recognize this kind of migration as we've looked at metal screws to now more mo modern uh, biocomposite screws. Well, if you look here, the metal screws, they did meet the mark with regard to being relatively easy to put in and being strong, but they offered some challenges. As we talked about in our previous papers, they can abrade or damage the graft. Uh, they can cause some artifact when we look for second uh, uh, time imaging. And as we know, these can be problematic at the time of a second surgery, both with removal but also loss of bone stock. As these evolved, uh, they, we moved to, to uh, first generation biocomposite screws. These uh, improved by having no MRI scatter. They facilitated revisions because they could either be easily removed or drilled through at the time of a revision surgery. But these uh, uh, weren't necessarily the best in terms of our time zero strength. They could break, they could slip. And we knew that there was improvements in materials that could have great time zero biomechanical strength, but be osteoconductive and have uh, all the best of both worlds. Our most modern PLDLA material combined with calcium phosphate can accomplish those goals. So in some ways, as you look at the evolution, what our goal is is to retain all of the good and get rid of all the bad so that we can ideally have a time zero fixation, good incorporation, and avoid any injury to our graft. Well, that brings us to the fast thread screw, which is our most modern design to incorporate these principles. As we've already talked about, we want it to go in reliably and reasonably quickly. We want enough material that offers a good scaffold for healing, but we don't want too much material to create voids and problems potentially for revision surgery. We want them to be strong to optimize our time zero biomechanical strength, but we also want to avoid any potential for injury or laceration to our graft. And if we optimize these principles combined with a solid clinical history and outcomes, then I think we have put together most of the optimal elements that we need for good time zero fixation at surgery. Well, let's talk about some of those principles. The fast thread engages quickly and it begins to advance with minimal turns. As you can see here, uh, some specific design related to the pitch and the threads allows this to happen relatively easily. As you can also notice, they have these vents, which we'll talk about shortly, which facilitate ingrowth for, for bone and also potential venting for delivery of biologics. This speaks a little bit to that larger pitch thread that you can see here compared to our conventional uh, biocomposite screw. It takes less turns of the screwdriver to advance anagrade. It allows for faster insertion, but importantly, it allows for more inner digitation of the graft between these threads. That prominent uh, lead thread for advancement of the graft allows this to advance reliably. Note that it's very strong when it's compared here to some of our other uh, historical biocomposite screws, even some of those that are the standard of care on the market. It has improved strength with a shorter length. You can see that likely reflects this difference between the pitch and the thread and this opportunity for graft interdigitation, which increases the interface for friction without damage to the graft. As you can see here, uh, we've done some torque testing uh, of the fast thread screw, uh, really put this to the test in hard porcine bone. In this particular worst case scenario model, we have not tapped the bone. This is an undersized socket, and I think you can appreciate this uh, uh, is able to be advanced reliably with secure fixation in bone. 
One of the important principles that all of us have seen in the past is sometimes with our biocomposite screws, we fear that they are deforming or losing their fixation strength as they go in. In this particular case, we actually remove the screw and can appreciate that it has preserved its uh, uh, thread geometry and preserved its form uh, to maximize that time zero strength in bone. So again, uh, ease, of, ease of placement and solid time zero fixation. Uh, the mechanism to place these screws with this fully cannulated hexalobe driver is uh, unique. Uh, as you have seen, this mechanism allows for uh, the screw to be supported along the entire length. Uh, this is important with biocomposite screws uh, so that the screw is not subject to a torque with a short driver and, a, and put at risk for breaking. Uh, this hexalobe drive also uh, allows for a central area void of graft material or of screw material, so it allows for, again, excellent ingrowth from the vents in the screw itself. So as we mentioned earlier, one of the primary uh, uh, and very important principles guiding interference fixation, particularly with soft tissue grafts, but also for bone tendon bone grafts, is to protect our graft and the soft tissue interface. Uh, you can see this design of the fast thread is key to this. Uh, the threads themselves are rounded, so they really avoid graft laceration and damage. As you can see, the head is rounded, so particularly as you advance the graft uh, and advance the screw to the final few turns of fixation, uh, it offers less risk of laceration. Uh, this graft uh, protective sheath is also available. Uh, many of us consider using this, particularly as we place our femoral screw with bone tendon bone grafts, and uh, uh, this is yet one more additional uh, point to protect your graft uh, with placement. As we move forward here, again, we talked about material. Uh, it's important to have sufficient material uh, that provides time zero fixation, but we really like to minimize the amount of material we have to permit ingrowth, uh, to be osteoconductive, and also to plan for the rainy day at the time of a potential revision ACL. As you can see here, the fast thread accomplishes this by actually being 22% less material than the previous biocomposite screw. You can see this allows for a maximum interface for healing. It still preserves opportunity for biologic delivery through our vents, but again, preserves bone stock for, for future cases. In terms of what's available, uh, as we, we are aware, uh, in the bone tendon bone situation, we typically have sockets sometimes as small as six, seven, eight millimeters, but as large as 10 and 11 millimeters. Uh, these are 20 millimeter screw lengths that are available, which are a good match for your typical bone plug and ideal for your BTB fixation. On the soft tissue side or on the tibial side of a BTB graft, we have seven to 12 millimeter sizes. Uh, these come both in a, a 23 and a 30 millimeter length. And again, that's ideal for soft tissue and patellar tendon graft fixation. And any place where you might have a, a little bit longer socket, uh, in my practice sometimes with MPFL reconstruction or any place that I'm docking a, a soft tissue graft. Well, what is the material? We talked about the importance of having something uh, that, that has, uh, hangs around long enough, if you will, for good time zero fixation, but also has a reliable track record of osseo integration. And the biocomposite material is a combination of 70% PLDLA and 30% calcium phosphate. And we found this to have a very reliable and long track record of safety, but also a reliable track record of incorporating into the bone. Uh, this has been studied very reliably in the laboratory. As you can see here, uh, uh, the clinical history is over 1.3 million screws implanted over the past 12 years uh, with a less than 0.002% complaint rate of issues. Uh, so long, largely speaking, as we, as we discussed, uh, we certainly don't want foreign body reactions or concerns related to a sterile inflammatory reaction with biocomposite devices. And uh, over 1 million uh, implantation with this 70%, uh, 30% balance of material gives us a lot of confidence that, that we don't have this issue. Uh, we also have very good animal and translational research models that uh, demonstrate the favorable osseo integration of uh, these fast thread screws and biocomposite material. You can see here, this is 52 week or one year data in a GOAT model. Uh, these are soft tissue ACL reconstructions that are performed with the Arthrex fast thread screw uh, versus a, a comparable material. I think you can appreciate this favorable osseo integration. Uh, the screw and its associated track and tunnel are largely incorporated with a woven bone that is subsequently maturing into, into a native mature bone. Uh, we subsequently uh, had even uh, the opportunity for uh, two-year data. I think, again, you can appreciate here no foreign body reaction on micro CT and CT data, excellent incorporation, and essentially full bone stock, uh, such that should a revision ACL reconstruction be necessary, you really have no concern over voids or the need for a potentially staged procedure. 
Uh, this is actually uh, uh, perhaps what is even more exciting about these fast thread screws. You can see uh, this is a dog uh, model, a dog tibia and femur here at 16 weeks out. I think you can appreciate these vents and the fast thread screws. This has allowed for bony ingrowth into those screw vents. Uh, this essentially starts to create these bridges that are right across your screw uh, and interface construct. Uh, these might not only contribute to mechanical strength, but once again, uh, uh, contribute to our goal of, of preserving bone and minimizing foreign material. So again, another, another strength and opportunity with, with this fixation. So to summarize here, I think the fast set screw represents uh, really the amalgamation of all the favorable aspects as we've evolved interference fixation. Uh, it's a reliable material with over uh, 1 million uh, implanted. It's 22% less material in the tunnel. It's easily inserted and reliably inserted. Uh, it's strong. And again, uh, when, we, when we highlighted earlier today, what is our real criteria of ideal interference screw fixation? I think it meets the mark. It preserves bone stock, has great time zero properties, avoids laceration and damage of the graft. And as we launch into the future with, uh, with understanding the appropriate delivery of biologics, uh, it offers us that opportunity to do so uh, at the most important interface of our ACL reconstructions, namely the tendon bone interface and the interface of the graft in the socket. So thanks again for the opportunity to speak with you about this today.